Yuko Yashida is a well-mannered, red-haired, 15-year-old girl who lives with her mother and little sister in an old apartment complex. One day, during her tight sleep, Yuko has a dream that she meets a young devil with one horn broken. The devil tells Yuko that she is a descendant of the Dark Clan and is on a mission to bring back her family's glory. As she is sleepy yet disturbed by a stranger talking nonsense, Yuko decides to ignore the devil and gets back to sleep. Waking up after a strange dream, Yuko's in shock to see a pair of huge horns on her head and a long demon's tail at her back. She ran to the kitchen to call her mother in panic, and Ryo is wondering what are those weird things on the sides of her sister's head. Yuko's mother, Seiko, calmly explains that the Yashida isn't an ordinary family, they're descendants of the Dark Clan that has been exiled since ancient times. Hearing this, Yuko thinks she's still dreaming and when she's about to get back to her bedroom, Seiko pulls her back forcing her to listen to the whole story. Their clan of darkness has been sealed in human form by the clan of light and being casted a curse of poverty. The Yashida family had everything taken away, so they have nothing to lose and can only spend under 40,000 yen a month. That apparently explains to Yuko why, every few days, they keep running out of food. Her mother also says that it's important for Yuko to break the seal and master the power of darkness so that she will grow a little taller and her family will be free from poverty. Her eyes lit up as she heard the taller part, then she asked her mother how to break the seal. Seiko tells her that she has to defeat the magical girls and apply their blood on the ancestral demon statue. It turns out Yuko's family's demon statue is the doorstop that her mother left lying around in the hallway. This is where the spirit of the Yashida family's ancestors is sealed. As it isn't used for anything and seems to be quite suitable, Yuko's mother used it to block the door. Before going out, Yuko asks her mother if there are any heirloom weapons passed on to her like the ones in fairy tales. But her mother tells her that if she walks around with a weapon, she'll attract too much attention. So instead, Seiko gives her a fork as her weapon and disguises the weapon in a bento box. On the way, as she keeps thinking about what happened this morning, plus her clumsiness and the new heavy horns, Yuko soon meets a string of unfortunate events. First, she falls into a sewer and drops the demon statue. When she runs out onto the road to pick up the statue, she is almost hit by a truck. Fortunately, a magical girl then jumps out and blocks the truck, saving her life. Seeing that the other girl only uses one hand, Yuko is too stunned to speak and stuffed in her head the hope that this is just a girl cosplaying an anime character. But that girl quickly confirms herself as a magical girl. Seemingly, Yuko found her target. She tremblingly takes out the weapon her mother gave her earlier, but the magical girl thought she was hungry and gave her a hamburger. Feeling both scared and insulted, Yuko grabs the hamburger and runs away. The next morning at school, Anri, Yuko's classmate, sees that her friend has horns. She excitedly says that Yuko could use it as a hanger, so she would be free to snack while shopping. Anri tries hanging her bag on Yuko's horn but almost breaks her neck because Yuko's physically weak. Yuko then tells her two best friends about the mission to revive her family by confronting magical girls. After knowing the mission, they immediately drag Yuko to meet Momo from another class. This girl is the strongest person in school and used to save the world six years ago. At a glance, Yuko recognizes that Momo is the magical girl who saved her yesterday. With the thought that she's just a weak, low-level demon yet wishes to confront such a great person, Yuko is about to give up. Unexpectedly, Anri grabs her by the tail and calls Momo for a battle with her. Being called a little child by Momo because of her height, Yuko loses her temper and starts kicking and punching the girl. But not so long after, Yuko soon gets tired and her punches feel like it's scratching to Momo. Yuko's so scared of Momo that when the girl tells her to stand up, she thinks she's about to see her ancestors. As it turns out, Momo just wants to teach Yuko how to punch properly. But after watching Yuko punching for a while, Momo tells her to find a gun instead of learning to fight. Feeling insulted again, Yuko throws a tantrum and runs back to class. The next day in class, Yuko confidently declares that yesterday's loss was because she didn't prepare well. If she practices hard, she'll be able to one day defeat that magical girl. Momo suddenly shows up from behind and tells Yuko that she's among the weakest magical girls. Momo's voice creeps Yuko out, as she thinks Momo's here to mess with her. Yuko grabs the ruler to protect herself, but when she realizes that there are much stronger magical girls than Momo, her whole body trembles. In order not to disappoint her ancestors, Yuko still asks Momo for a fight on the weekend. Then she goes to the gym and picks up a one-pound dumbbell to train her muscles. But when she sees Momo with her 200-pound dumbbells, Yuko's extremely discouraged. It's the date. Yuko comes to see Momo in the schoolyard. 
thinking it's gonna be a bloody brutal battle. Yuko's surprised when Momo eventually tells her to jog with her to stay healthy. Little Yuko keeps running and running after Momo for 4 kilometers until she's exhausted. When she looks back, she's shocked to realize that now to get back home, she has to run for another 4 kilometers. So Yuko unwillingly borrows Momo 500 yen to take the train home, as her energy's totally out. But when she's on the train, she's so tired that she falls asleep and misses her stop. Eventually, she managed to get home. Ryo suggests Yuko use ranged weapons if she wants to win against the magical girl. So, she made a rubber slingshot out of a bamboo stick. Momo takes her to an abandoned factory that belongs to Momo, as she once destroyed it by mistake, so she had to buy it. Saying that the slingshot is dangerous, she snatches it from Yuko's hand and lends her a magic stick. Momo keeps asking Yuko to make magic, and she can only go home if she nails it. But no matter how hard Yuko tries, there isn't any hope at all. According to Momo, in order to create magic, one must have a spell, which is their wish that could arouse strong emotions. Yuko continues to wave the stick and says all sorts of nonsense. It's when she says she wants everyone to be friends that a little ball of magic comes out from the stick. But it's pretty weak and slow, just like Yuko, so it only flows ahead for about one meter and then goes back looking for Yuko. Momo says that getting hit by it just feels like an ant bite. But Yuko doesn't believe Momo, so she runs away. Thought it would hurt a lot. But in the end, when Yuko's hit by the magic ball, it does feel like an ant bite. One day, when she sees Yuko worshipping the demon statue, Momo picks it up and finds a switch underneath the statue. When she tries to switch it on, Yuko suddenly loses consciousness. Turns out her soul's being pulled inside the statue. Yuko meets her great-great-grandma, Lilith, again and realizes that all she does is to sit all day long watching TV. Lilith says that as Yuko and her family gave her a lot of food and switched the statue on, she's able to possess her body to be able to come back to life. Then, her great-great-grandma left Yuko's soul in the statue and used her body. Seeing Momo, Lilith introduces herself as the witch who ruled over the eternal fountain of magic, and that she's here in the body of her descendant to beat Momo. Lilith wants to have a fight with Momo, but after walking around for a while, she soon gets tired. She never expected that Yuko's weak body would be such a huge problem. Her friends can't help but try to hold their laughter. Later, Yuko wakes up to find herself lying in a spa room. It turns out that Momo only touched Lilith's hand, yet the great demon was afraid of being crushed to dust. So she immediately surrendered and asked for her last favor, which was to bathe in a hot spring. Yuko now ends up with a sore body and a spa bill of 1,720 yen. Since Lilith didn't have money to pay, she borrowed it from Momo and told her to count on Yuko's debt. Having suddenly incurred a large debt, Yuko has to find a part-time job. However, her mother says that their family's cursed to live under 40,000 yen a month. If there's any extra money, it will eventually be lost in one way or another. So no matter how hard she works, Yuko can't change the fact. But making money is better than not doing anything. So Yuko's still determined to work to pay her debt. After a month of working part-time, Yuko earns enough money to pay off her debt to Momo. But when Momo knows that Yuko has a younger sister, she doesn't want to take the money. Instead, she tells Yuko to use that money on her family first, and the debt can be paid in installments of 50 yen a month. That afternoon, Yuko takes her sister to the market to buy her some gifts. Momo finds this interesting and asks to go along as Yuko's best friend. While passing over the shops, Momo notices that Ryo keeps looking at the cameras, so she tells Yuko that Ryo really likes cameras. Since the camera isn't very expensive, Yuko buys it for her sister. To thank her sister and Momo, Ryo takes them to his first picture, only to realize that they have to transfer the picture to a computer to print it out using the USB port. The next morning, Momo tells Yuko she will lend Ryo her laptop. Knowing Yuko is low-tech, Momo threatens her that a ball, some water, or even a one-time dropping would break the machine. When Yuko hears that, her whole body trembles, and she goes step by step to bring the laptop back to her sister. When she and the laptop get home safely, she accidentally stumbles over the devil statue, causing the computer to fall to the floor. Then it's Ryo's turn to step on the bag without knowing that there's a computer inside. Before Yuko can do anything to save the computer, her mother trips over the floor and pours the whole basin of water over the bag. Yuko pulls out the computer and realizes it's soft, and little Yuko is scared to death as she thought the laptop had gone. It turns out Momo had foreseen this and fully waterproofed the laptop. She threatens Yuko just for fun. One morning, on the way to school, Yuko finds Momo in an exhausted state. Guessing that her friend's sick, Yuko calls Momo's teacher to ask for her absence and takes her home to rest. At Momo's house, Yuko's surprised to find out that her friend lives alone in a mansion. 
Entering the mansion, Yuko searches for ice cubes to put on Momo's head and finds a plate of something very shady inside. She thought it was devil's meat made with hatred, but turns out it was a plate of steak Momo made yesterday. She tended to make it for Yuko, but it looked horrible, so she gave up her intention. But she didn't want to waste it. Yuko immediately guesses that because of eating this poisonous food, Momo got sick. Knowing that Momo worked hard on the dish, Yuko decides to try it. To her, the dish isn't bad at all, or in fact, it's not that it can make someone throw up. Actually, as being born in poverty, Yuko's sense of taste has been trained to not reject anything. While covering Momo with a blanket, Yuko discovered that her friend's hand had a bleeding wound. She takes out from her bag a handkerchief to wipe the wound and then puts it back in. When she gets home, seeing that the demon statue is in the garbage area, she quickly picks it up and puts it in her bag. As the statue touches Momo's blood on the handkerchief, it seals broken, but Yuko still doesn't know what happens. Right after that, Yuko sees Momo at her apartment. Momo still seems to be tired. Yuko asks Momo to come into her house and makes her a bowl of cold miso. Initially, Momo thought Yuko took her blood on purpose, but it turns out she's overthinking it. Yuko isn't that clever. It's until she hears her great-great-grandma's voice from the statue that Yuko finds out the seal was broken. Momo also says that because of breaking the seal, her magic has been consumed. So in the time coming, Momo would like to ask for Yuko's help to protect the city. Yuko thinks she's incompetent for this, but seeing that her friend's sick, she finally accepts the request. After that, Momo takes a week off from school, and Yuko happily shows the partly unsealed statue to her mother and sister. A little bit of Momo's blood isn't enough to dispel the entire curse, but it helps raise Yuko's family income a little. Riaiko luckily finds her lost purse with 100,000 yen in it. A few days later, Momo's getting better but isn't fully recovered, so she decided to train Yuko to be stronger. She ties a giant tire to Yuko and makes her pull it, but there's no way she can make it move. Then, Anri passes by and says that she should practice her mental skills first before doing exercises. Because Yuko is extremely fragile, in order for Yuko to practice running, Momo tricks her into buying strawberry machai and cold tea. While the two are eating machai, Momo reveals that she used to have an older sister, but the two aren't siblings because Momo's an orphan. After the meal, Momo continues to force Yuko to pull the tire until late at night. One day, while working part-time in a Tama Cat outfit, Yuko comes across Mikan, a blonde-haired magical girl. Remembering Momo's words that when she's weak, Yuko's family might be hunted down, making her scared to death. Things don't stop here. Mikan also adds that she came here because she heard this city's magical girl was being defeated and enslaved by a demon girl. If she meets that demon, she'll get them into a fight right away. What she said scared Yuko even more. She doesn't dare to take off her Tama Cat outfit. Even on the way back, Mikan still follows Yuko, making her sweat all over. But Mikan thought Yuko had a fever, so she drags her into an alley and takes the Tama Cat's head off, only to figure out that inside the cat costume is a scared demon girl. And as Yuko's too terrified, she transforms into a demon warrior. Seeing that Yuko was completely defenseless, the magical girl lent her a cloak to cover her little outfit. Momo shows up and explains that it was Momo that called Mikan here for her help. In fact, Mikan read Momo's message and thought the demon was an uncontrollable giant cow. At first glance, Mikan thought Yuko was younger than her because of her height. Those words hurt Yuko's pride. She cries and runs home. The next day, Yuko meets Mikan again and learns that she will move here to protect Yuko. But this girl's also under a curse that if she gets too excited or emotional, people around her will have bad luck. Momo's her first victim. This morning, when she met the happy Mikan, a pile of wet cement also came for her. That evening, the three of them go to the riverside to practice. Momo wants to see Yuko's transformation. But no matter how hard she tries, Yuko's unable to transform. Lilith tells her that only when she's terrified will she transform into a demon warrior. So Momo plans to use magic to scare Yuko, but she faints before she can do anything. Mikan says that if a magical girl runs out of power, she will vanish. When Momo wakes up and finally can scare Yuko and see her transformation, Yuko embarrassingly runs away. That afternoon, Mikan asks Yuko out for a walk. Little Yuko can't help but think that Mikan's going to take her to some quiet place and beat her up. But Mikan just wants to bring Yuko to the cinema. They will watch a horror movie to train Yuko's mind. Inside the theater, Mikan is the one who's scared and closes her eyes and holds her breath even though the movie hasn't been played yet. About Yuko, she thought the movie would be scary, 
but after watching it for a while, she finds it interesting because it's her first time going to the cinema. Yuko's even touched by the ragged zombies who have to fight against the fictional boosted power of the main character. Meanwhile, Mikan neither watched the movie nor trained Yuko's mind, as when the film started, she faints due to loss of breath. Today, while Ryo's using the laptop, it suddenly freezes. Yuko tells Ryo not to worry because she'll ask Momo about it. But she suddenly thinks that if Momo found out that her laptop was broken, she would definitely force Yuko to exercise to death. Thinking about it is enough to make her whole body shiver. But eventually, she still has to take Ryo to Momo's house to fix the laptop. At Momo's house, Yuko can't stand seeing her friend having french fries for lunch, so she makes her a bowl of udon. Yuko doesn't want to hide from her sister anymore. She told Ryo that Momo's actually a magical girl. Not only does Ryo not feel disappointed, but on the contrary, she's also proud that her sister has a magical girl to be her underling. Momo doesn't want to disappoint this cute girl, so she acts along with her. When Mikan arrived, Momo immediately dragged her into the corner, telling her about the situation here. Finally, Mikan has to admit that she's also Yuko's underling, and then everyone enjoys their ice cream. Later in the afternoon, after checking the laptop, Momo says it's fine. Perhaps because Yuko's house doesn't have air conditioning. The laptop got too hot, so it froze. She just needs to sit somewhere cool or give it a little rest. One night, Lilith helps Yuko enter. Momo's dreams because she wants to learn about the mind of her magical friend. But Momo quickly figures out that this is a dream and that Yuko's real, not an illusion. The two sit and talk, and Yuko accidentally reveals that she was very weak when she was a child and often had to be hospitalized. Momo feels guilty for having forced Yuko to practice hard all day. Yuko also says that her father has to work far away to pay for her hospital bills. According to Yuko's mother, her father used to work as a squid fisherman on a nuclear submarine carrier. He's now a specialist in buying water purifiers for space warships. Momo finds it hard to believe, but Yuko doesn't give a doubt. Guessing that Yuko's mother's hiding something about her father, Momo suggests after waking up, she will go to Yuko's house and clarify everything. Suddenly Mikan sees Momo sweating, so she tries to wake Momo up in panic. Momo only has enough time to tell Yuko to ask her mother about her father, but Yuko misheard the sentence as Momo was going to mess with her mother. So she wakes up, immediately gets out of her bed and blocks the door to stop Momo from entering her apartment. She even transforms into a demon warrior to confront her pink-haired friend. Yuko's mother realizes that the two are misunderstanding each other, so she asks them both to go inside. She decides to tell them everything about the Yashida family. As Momo and Yuko acknowledge, the Yashida family is under a ceiling curse, so they often have bad luck. When she was born, Yuko inherited the strongest demon blood, and that caused her to be the most affected by the curse. In contrast, her younger sister Ryo was mostly unharmed. Momo thought that because of the curse, Yuko was often clumsy and stupid. But Ryaiko says it's nothing related to the curse. Yuko's got her mother's clumsiness. Ryaiko adds that when they first moved to this city, the family was helped by a magical girl who was also the guardian of this city. Her name's Sakura, and she's Momo's older sister. She protected Yuko's family from demon hunters. Furthermore, in order to make Yuko less ill, her father and Sakura agreed to give away the family's luck in exchange for Yuko's health. As a result, the Yashida family can only live under 40,000 yen a month. About Sakura, for interfering with the ancient curse, she lost her magic power. She asked Yuko's father to help her protect this city. After Yuko's mother gave birth to her sister Ryo at the hospital, she returned home to find Sakura had disappeared, and Yuko's father had been sealed in a cardboard box. It's the box that the girls have long used to prop up the grill or stand up to pick up objects high up. After Momo leaves, Ryaiko shows Momo a picture of her father. Yuko's father looks like a teenage boy, and she painfully realizes that she's short because of her father. That means even when the seal is broken, her height won't add up at all. At night, Yuko's mother tells Ryo everything and says that she has always lied about her father's work. Little Ryo isn't too surprised and says that no one would believe that there's a suspicious job like squid fishing on a nuclear submarine carrier. Turns out it's only silly Yuko who has believed it the whole time. One day, Yuko caught Mikan loitering in front of her house. It turns out that Mikan has moved out of Momo's house to live outside. She is looking for an apartment complex called Banda Terrace. But according to the instructions, she only saw an abandoned building. Yuko says that this is her house and that it is the Banda Terrace apartment building that Mikan is looking for. Mikan rented a room right next to Yuko's house because it was on promotion for 120 yen. 
When Micken entered the room, she realized that this was no different from a haunted room. Micken said the reason she left Momo's house was because every morning Momo practiced very early, so it was very noisy. Furthermore, Micken also wanted to come here to find out clues about Momo's sister Sekura. Thanks to Sekura, Micken's curse was partially controlled. At this moment, Momo appeared with a gloomy appearance, startling the two girls. Momo felt quite worried when Mikan suddenly moved out. Hearing that, Ancestor teased Momo that she felt lonely when Mikan and Yuko were getting closer. Ancestor also cursed Momo to eat fast food all her life in solitude and was immediately thrown out of the window by Momo. Momo decided that this summer she would move to this apartment complex. Yuko was startled to realize that her summer vacation would be sandwiched between two magical girls. To greet the neighbors, Mikan gave Yuko's family several boxes of orange-flavored cakes produced by her factory, while Momo gave Yuko's family a pile of premium beef. Yuko's mother decides to throw a party to welcome the new neighbors. Mikan sees Yuko offering food on a box that is sealing her father. Mikan recognized this box as a packing box from her factory. She also said that in this city there was her family's old baking factory, so Yuko thought that there might be clues about her father being sealed there. All three of them decided to go there to find out. It turned out that was the place Momo used to teach magic to Yuko. After entering the factory, Mikan was shocked to discover that the place filled with memories of her childhood had become desolate. The three of them tried looking around to see if there were any clues. Yuko accidentally found a staff and immediately ran to tell Momo. But when it was shown to everyone, it turned into a fork. Yuko was confused and didn't understand what was going on, and Momo thought she was stupid. When she got home, Yuko's mother tried to draw a picture of that staff, and Yuko confirmed that that was what she saw. Yuko's mother said that it was Yuko's father's staff. Ancestor said that the staff would transform depending on the user because, in Yuko's eyes, the fork was a weapon, so it changed into that shape. Yuko tried turning it into a weapon, but it only turned into a bigger fork. Today Momo decided to search for other demons hiding in the city to investigate clues about Sakura. But because Sakura's barrier is helping the demons hide and not let the magical girls get close, Yuko has to go alone this time. Before leaving, Momo asked Yuko to buy food when she returned. Yuko came to Anri to ask if she knew any demons because Anri had quite a wide network of connections. Anri showed Yuko to a cafe because the owner here is very special. When she arrived, Yuko discovered that outside there was also a talisman similar to the one posted on her door. Entering the cafe, Yuko encountered a white fox girl named Liko, and the owner of the cafe was a tapir with injuries all over his body. Yuko said that she came here because of the notice posted on the door. The boss mistakenly thought it was Yuko who came to apply for a job because she saw the recruitment flyer. Before Yuko could ask anything about the demons, the boss immediately asked the girl to work as a waitress at the restaurant. He even knelt down on the ground to beg Yuko to work here, so Yuko had to accept a job as a waitress. Yuko thought the shop was small, so there wouldn't be much work, but after a while, the number of customers coming in made the girl spin like a pinwheel. Even though it's quite tiring, at this restaurant you get unlimited food for the staff, and you can eat as much as you want. Meanwhile, Momo and Mikan were waiting for Yuko to bring back the food, but she didn't come back until late at night. What the girl brought back was not food or useful information but a new part-time job. For the next few days, Yuko regularly went to that cafe to work, forgetting her main job, which was to explore the demons. Even when she comes home, she still acts like a model employee. Seeing Mikan come to visit, Yuko jumped up to serve as a waitress. Momo and Mikan were very worried, so they decided to launch a campaign to stop Yuko from working part-time. Momo inserted Ancestor's soul into a doll made by Augura, then placed the Ancestor on Mikan's crossbow along with the magic staff and shoot straight at the cafe where Yuko is working. This way, Ancestor can use the magic stick to destroy the barrier protecting the cafe. After finishing, Momo went into the restaurant to find Yuko. Yuko was sitting absent-mindedly on the food table as if hypnotized. The owner said that the food here, made by Aliko, has a soothing effect on the soul, making the eater temporarily forget all the pressures of life. The boss said that if Yuko forgot what Momo had told her, it must have been a request that put a lot of pressure on her. Hearing that, Momo felt that perhaps she had gone too far with Yuko, so when she returned home, she decided not to mention the search for demons anymore. A few days later, boss Shirasawa and Liko came to visit Yuko's house and met Momo. Momo took this opportunity to inquire about Sakura's whereabouts, but Shirasawa also had no information. The last time he saw Sakura was when he opened the cafe 10 years ago. That was also the time Yuko was in the hospital due to illness. It was Sekura who brought poor Liko to apply for a job at his shop. 
Momo said that even if the magical girl disappears due to loss of magic power, her soul will still remain. It can take the form of an animal or some object. Shirasawa gave Yuko several boxes of cakes printed with Tama's cat image as a thank you gift for helping at the cafe. It turns out that Shirasawa is the creator of the Tama cat image. Yuko now wondered why Momo liked Tama the cat so much. Momo replied that, because it resembled Sakura, she liked it very much. Shirasawa said that the Tama cat was taken from an image of a cat he accidentally encountered. It was about three days after he last saw Sakura. He remembers the white cat running on the snow but leaving no footprints and being able to walk through walls. Ryoko bases all the information and concludes that there is a high possibility that the white cat is Sakura's soul. When looking at the map of the white cat's appearance according to Shirasawa's memories, everyone discovered that the cat had entered Saeki Hospital. At this moment, Yuko's mother walked in and said that Yuko was talking to a white cat at the hospital. But Yuko doesn't remember anything about that white cat. Ancestor suggested letting Yuko go into her own subconscious to find out what happened 10 years ago because her ability is to enter other people's dreams. When she entered her own consciousness, she was so haunted by memories of the needles that she lost contact with Ancestor. Ancestor told Momo that without a guide, Yuko would get lost in her memories and sleep for several days. Seeing that, Mikan immediately squeezed a lemon into Yuko's mouth to wake her up, but it didn't work. When Yuko was trying to hide from the scary needles, she suddenly heard a strange voice. The voice instructs Yuko to use the power of her father's staff to remove the needles. Then the thing that came from the voice appeared as a streak of light. It says it's not Yuko's memory, and it has met the girl twice. This is because Yuko's memories are the intermediary, so to see its true form, Yuko must concentrate highly. When that voice revealed its true form, it turned out to be the spirit of the magical girl Sakura, Momo's older sister. When she saw Sakura, Yuko stood still for a moment and then happily realized that the mission was more successful than expected. Yuko immediately enthusiastically pulled Sakura to find a way back to the real world. But Sakura said that right now she could not return with Yuko because the body Yuko saw was just an illusion. The real soul is inside Yuko. Hearing that, Yuko screamed in panic, causing Sakura to almost disappear. To explain everything, Sakura said that they needed to return to Yuko's hospital room. Sakura guided Yuko to focus her mind to bring them both back to the scene 10 years ago. When looking into the hospital room, Yuko saw Sakura's soul turn into crystal and enter her body. Sakura said that she did so to keep Yuko alive. At this moment, Yuko's magic power was about to run out, so Sekura had to disappear. Yuko was panicked because if she couldn't bring Sekura back, Momo wouldn't be able to smile happily. Sekura felt very happy when she saw that her sister had a friend who cared so much. She told Yuko that if she became a strong demon, maybe she could overcome the curse and help her return. Sekura then leaned into Yuko's ear, whispered something, and slowly disappeared. Yuko could only hug her father's staff and find a way out. After a while, Yuko was forced to run into a corner of the wall by the needles. Yuko realized in fear that no matter how powerful the weapon was, it was useless in the hands of a weak person like her. Suddenly, Momo appears as a black magical girl to rescue Yuko. It turned out that outside, the two girls and Ancestor were worried about trying to wake Yuko up. Only relatives can enter Yuko's dream, but Ancestor doesn't have enough magical power to return, so Momo plans to use her blood to unseal Ancestor. But Ancestor says her blood cannot break the ancient seal. Ancestor thought of a way to help the temporarily fallen Momo, to become Yuko's subordinate so she could enter Yuko's dream. Yuko is excited about Momo's new form and is constantly curious about it. Momo grabbed Yuko's tail and pulled her straight back to the real world. When Yuko woke up, she was startled to see a bird-headed monster. It turned out to be Augura and Yuko lying in her lap. After Momo woke up, Mikan used a magic crossbow to shoot at her to neutralize the dark magic. But because Mikan was a bit shaken, her curse was activated, causing Augura's laboratory to be destroyed. When she got home, Yuko told Momo everything. Momo felt relieved because she knew where her sister was. Momo finally smiled happily, making Yuko cry emotionally. What Sekura told Yuko was to take care of her and keep Momo company. One morning, Momo woke up and was transformed into a black magical girl. Yuko heard a strange noise and ran to check, but was surprised to see Momo in her new form. Momo said she didn't feel tired at all, but on the contrary, she was full of energy. But with such powerful outbursts of magic power, sooner or later it will run out and only the soul will remain. So Momo decided to ask Mikan to help her dispel the black magic. But Mikan was sleeping soundly, so the two of them had to shake her for a while before she woke up. 
but Mikan's method doesn't work now, so they have to go to Augura. After analyzing for a while, Augura concluded that it was because Momo was mentally unstable that she was turned into a black magical girl. If the psychological problem is resolved, maybe everything will return to normal. After being questioned for a while, Momo confessed that because she didn't fully enjoy Yuko's bento box, she felt uncomfortable last night. So Yuko immediately went to make a bento box, but was afraid that Yuko would wait too long and she would disappear, so Yuko took the unattractive bento box she made last time. When Momo tasted a bite, she immediately returned to normal, but Augura said that if you're not careful, it could happen again. One fine day, Mikan was cleaning her trash-filled room when she saw a cockroach. She screamed and ran to find Yuko, but Yuko felt normal because she was so familiar with this dilapidated building full of insects. Yuko gave Mikan a box of tissue paper and told her that, if necessary, she would use paper to catch it and drop it outside. Mikan was scared when she heard that, but Yuko said that cockroaches weren't as scary as Momo. If needed, Yuko can help Mikan catch it. Yuko helps her clean the house. When Mikan saw the cockroach, she screamed again. Momo heard Mikan's voice, so she immediately ran over. When she learned that Mikan's house had cockroaches, she drew an anti-insect charm. Then give it to Yuko, who will use magic power to activate it, and hang it in front of the door. But because Yuko is too weak, the charm only lasts for a while before it stops working. So Momo drew many charms for Mikan to use gradually. The next day, Momo decided to help Yuko use the staff proficiently, but Yuko still couldn't change anything. So Ancestor offered to enter her world to practice. Ryoko, who was at home, was also allowed to come along. And Momo no longer had black magic, so she couldn't enter Yuko's dream. Ryoko told Yuko to try turning the stick into a sword. But what she turned out was nothing more than a useless thing. Ryoko tried suggesting to Yuko to turn it into a magic wand like in a fairy tale game and finally succeeded. To commemorate this, Ryoko took a photo, but the dream image could not be brought to the real world, so Ancestor used magic to transfer it into Ryoko's camera. But when opened, the result is a disgusting photo. Summer finally ended, and all three girls went to school together. Mikan was very nervous because this was her first day in class, but in the end, everything went quite smoothly. The three of them were asked by Anri to help prepare for the sports festival. Mikan practiced the games that will be held during the festival. But while practicing, she accidentally bumped into a group drawing a sign, causing Mikan to fall to the ground and faint. The curse within Mikan suddenly flared up strongly. Luckily, thanks to Momo, everyone is safe. But the sign painting was dirty because paint was spilled on it. Everyone was very worried and ran to ask about Mikan, and no one blamed her. But Mikan still feels guilty and very sad that he almost endangered his friends. She asked Momo and Yuko to stay away from her for a while to avoid getting hurt. She said that people are very nice and she loves her friends in this city, but because of that, she is even more afraid of hurting them. Back home, Yuko and Momo decided to find a way to completely solve Mikan's problem. They came to see Mikan and planned to go into her consciousness to meet the demon and then find a way to convince it to remove the curse from Mikan. Ancestor helped the two girls enter Mikan's mind, and she revealed that the demon's name was Yugalu. The two girls found the source of the black magic that was covering Mikan's mind and guessed that it was the demon Yugalu. But it seems Mikan can't hear Yuko or Momo because she's in an amorphous state. Yuko transformed her staff into an egg beater with the intention of separating the demon from Mikan, like separating an egg yolk from an egg white. Yuko continuously stirred and successfully separated the demon from Mikan, and she gradually revealed her true form as a shy girl. After a while, Yuko was so tired that she lay down on the ground and left the negotiation to Momo. At this time, Anri went outside to look for the girls and saw all three lying motionless. Anri thought the three of them had just been killed by some murderer, but luckily Ancestor was there and explained everything. Meanwhile, Momo tried to convince the demon Yugalu to leave Mikan's heart, but Yugalu is quite stubborn and says that her duty is here to protect Mikan. Momo explains that its overprotectiveness has gotten Mikan out of trouble. Yugalu realized she had been bothering Mikan for the past 10 years, fell into depression, and decided to give up the mission. Yugalu no longer had a purpose to exist, so Yugalu gradually disappeared. At this moment, Mikan jumped up and held Yugalu. Mikan said that after all, they had been together for more than 10 years, so she considered Yugalu a friend, so she didn't want things to end like that. After waking up, Yuko asked the girl Augura to find a way to put Yugalu's soul into another incarnation. She called a few more friends to help make a doll. Thanks to that, everything was done in one night. After completing the preparations, Momo and Yuko performed the ritual to summon Yugalu into the doll. 
Everything went well, and Yugalu completely left Mikan's body. Yugalu was about to leave, thinking she was causing too much trouble for Mikan. But Mikan held Yugalu back, saying she was her family. Mikan told Yugalu to live with her until she found something she wanted to do in this world. 